hey YouTube, so it's a uh, boy in here, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't actually want to make a video, but um, it's just, so this is gonna be quick because uh, it's not actually, I don't actually, um, it's not very interesting for me to make videos about, about uh about the stock market and uh well you could just ignore my tabs i was watching i was watching some youtube videos but anyway so um so i started on october 11th and right now it's november 10th so it's been about one month and so i'll just show everybody uh the progress after one month so um i have 123 percent in Canadian stocks and 12% uh, in cash so and then and then so the unrealized gain is three thousand one hundred and twenty one dollars <coughs> so my stocks have gone up 10% uh, over one month So anyways, so specifically I bought BTO and then I sold call options for BTO and I bought I know I thought about this cuz like oh my God, I don't <coughs> I don't want to <coughs> I don't want to buy a stock called weed but um uh, I pure I bought I bought the stock purely because I think it is a good investment <coughs> Uh, not because I support the company. I am against. Um, I am against uh, legalized marijuana, um, but I think the stock has some potential because right now it's at a very low price, <coughs> and the call option, especially, is a uh, um, worth a lot. So, <coughs> so I bought the stock and sold the call option. And CLS obviously still have that and the call options for it and I also bought fill and I sold call options for fill and NXE so bought it sold call options for it and Shopify so Shopify is actually incredible because uh, I bought it for 70 and right now it's at 84 so um, it's actually incredible and I sold call options for it too so uh, that is basically uh, if you want to know which stocks I picked it's BTO uh, weed sorry um, CLS fill NXE and shop. So yeah, I'm holding a bunch of different different stocks, and um, and I sell call options for all of them because uh, uh, because it's it's much safer. Um, I won't explain the details of how to of selling call options. Basically, just pick. Uh, well, I won't get into. It. I think if anybody is really interested, then they can figure that out for um, for themselves. But anyway, so how I pick the stocks is is uh, here is the list of. Uh, the 200 largest companies in Canada and uh, and so uh, so yeah I just look at them and then I look at uh, whether it's interesting so Shopify is um, well, I, I don't know. I don't know if I really have a method for picking them. I just think a, a stock looks good and then I pick it. That's about it. Um, 
I look at a bunch of things. I look at basically um well I don't know. I don't I don't think I'm gonna get into the details of it, but but basically I just have a feeling that this is a stock that um I feel like it's overvalued. Well the thing is I think I think you can buy almost any of these stocks. Um within reason. Just um there are some stocks that might like it's obvious that it looks very bad and then you're not gonna buy it. Um but I think I think almost any stock is actually good to buy. Um If, if I really think about it. The important thing is um, is about what price you can sell the call option for. And I would say I would say most of the top 200 stocks are about the same. Um, you want a stock that looks okay. Uh, the thing is, if you're just buying stocks, then you're kind of worried because, um, because uh, if the price goes down, then you have um, an unrealized loss. <coughs> but the thing is, <coughs> if you sell call options on your stocks, then it's not as important. For example, um, Weed is a very, um, it looks like a very risky investment, but the thing is, I sold the call option for it, so, uh, so I bought it at 80 cents, I sold the call option at 40 cents, which means that, uh, weed could drop by 40 cents, and I would still break even, <laughs> so that's the thing, um, as long as as long as I can sell the call option for um, a good amount, um, then uh, then uh, then there's no real risk um, because the price of the call option depends on uh, on sort of the the riskiness of the stock. So the more risky the stock is, then the more uh, the higher the price the call option is. So we is a very risky stock, so then the call option is, is worth 50% of the price of the stock. So, so that's all it is to it. It's just everything is pre-calculated. Um, everything is, uh, is, is priced in to the price of the call option. So, um, so then uh, whatever stock you own, if you sell call options for it, um, then uh, whatever risk you have in owning the stock is completely offset by the call options. For example, uh, maybe a stock is like it's very safe, but then if the stock is very safe, uh, then then the call option won't be worth very much because if the stock doesn't change very much. Uh, then this call option isn't profitable, so then nobody, uh, so then the call option isn't worth very much. That is all there is to it. And then, uh, so whatever stock you buy, you just want to sell the call option for, uh, the highest price. And there's a couple of things to sort of take into account. So for example, uh, so I bought BTO at four dollars and fifty, and then I sold the five dollar call option uh, for seventy cents, which means that whoever bought the call option, uh, which means that I'm safe. Uh, I'm guaranteed all the way up to five dollars and seventy cents. Uh, because uh, 
because the the strike price, the price on the call option is five dollars, and the price of the call option is seventy cents. So that means that uh, uh, that whoever has my bought my call option uh, would buy my stocks for five dollars, and then I get seventy dollars. I get seventy cents. I get 70 cents for the call option, so then basically I'm guaranteed uh, $5.70. So I bought it for $4.50 and I'm guaranteed $5.70. That's the basic idea. Um, unless, uh, unless the buyer decides not to use the call option, which could choose to do that. Um, so then, in that case, it's just the seventy cents. So then, that means that if uh, my stock goes down seventy cents, so if uh, as long as it doesn't go down below uh, three dollars and eighty cents, then uh, then then it's good. But it's actually better than that because even if it goes down below three dollars and eighty cents, for example, let's say that it drops a lot, let's say it drops to two dollars, uh, or something like that, then the price of the call option will also drop. It'll drop to uh, maybe forty cents or thirty cents. So then I could buy back the call option and then sell another call option. And then I would make the money back. That's the the idea. Is that uh, <coughs> is that no matter the price of the stock, if it goes up or it goes down, um, the call option keeps it uh, keeps the risk in control. So there's no there's no real risk. Um, So it's sort of the same idea with uh, weed. So let's say that uh, so I bought at eighty cents and sold the call option for forty cents. So let's say that weed drops to forty cents per share. Um, then I'm still even. So if it drops even below that, if it drops to let's say twenty cents, uh, then the call option will also drop. So I could buy back the call option and sell another call option. Um, so, <clears throat> so anyways, the point is that um, as long as the call option is a significant percentage of the price of the stock, so for example for CLS, I don't expect the stock to fall more than five dollars. Um, that's basically the risk. Is that um, uh, the risk is fairly low because uh, the risk is priced in to the call option. So for weed, the the risk is expected to be fifty percent. So uh, so uh, using a probability theory, um, there's a likelihood that the weed stock could drop in price by 50%. That's why the, the call option is worth 50% of the stock price. Uh, but for example, for CLS, that's not really the case. Um, uh, we, uh, using probability theory, the price of the stock isn't expected to drop more than $5, which is why the, pr uh, the call option is priced at $5. That is the idea. Um, the more stable the stock is, the, the lower the price of the call option. The more risky the stock is, the higher the price of the call option. So it doesn't it doesn't actually matter uh, whether the stock itself is uh, safe or risky because once you sell the call option, then whatever whatever risk that you're holding in in the stock is accounted for in the price of the call option. Um, 
So for example, fill is seems very safe. That's why the call option is uh, very cheap. And then Shopify. So Shopify is actually uh, very. It's actually seen as very risky. But so um, so I sold some very expensive uh, call options for Shopify. Basically, what it means is that so I bought Shopify at seventy. So even if it drops to uh, thirty-seven. Even if it drops to thirty-seven dollars, then I still break even. Um, and I don't think that's gonna happen. But you can see the volatility is clearly here. Like it's clearly risky because it it jumped from seventy to eighty-four. So clearly, it is capable of very big uh, price changes. Uh, so. If the stock has large price changes, then the call option is very expensive. And if the stock has very small price changes, then the call option is uh, is not very expensive. So that is the idea. Um, it means uh, that. Uh, so the question is like, do I do I really make money from this? Um, on paper, I definitely do, because like, uh, on paper, the value of my investments is uh, three thousand dollars more than uh, what I paid for. Uh, but obviously, it's a little bit complicated because of <laughs> because of the call options. So then. Uh, somebody could decide to use the call option and then uh, buy my stocks at a fixed price. Um, so it's it's hard to say because I can't um, I can't say like definite in any definite sense that I've made money or lost money. <laughs> Um, that's sort of the thing because everything is sort of on paper because everything depends on uh, a lot of different things so you can say like um, even the, the actual value of what I'm holding um, there's like maybe four or five different ways to calculate it how much um, how much uh, all these uh, option call option contracts and stock shares combined is actually worth um, depending on how I decide to value it so it's just um, um, so it's very interesting it's um it's not the same as if you just hold cash and just hold stock shares because then everything is very concrete it's sort of like uh, you have the stock you bought it at a certain price right now it's worth this much so either you can you know either it's worth more than you bought it for or it's worth less than you bought it for um, if you're holding call options against the stock uh, then it's just it becomes very complicated because um, because it depends on the strike price, so like no matter what the price of the stock is, the buyer uh, guarantees to buy it at, at five dollars. So um, it's it's uh, it's difficult to think about. Basically, it's like whatever you, however you want to value it, can be the value of it. Um, Especially for 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 example for Shopify, it's like, well, the question is how how much should I value the 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 uh, the stock shares plus the call options? Like, well, like how much is the call option actually worth? Um, how much is the stock worth against how much I bought it for? But, 
Um, it's it's almost impossible to figure out what the actual <laughs> what the actual worth of these two objects is um, combined. So, because you could say that um, fifty five dollar strike price plus thirty three dollar um, uh, premium, so that fifty five plus thirty three, so it should be worth eighty eight dollars. So then my Shopify. Sh shares should be worth $88 and then that doesn't depend on what the price is right now because all of this is predetermined <laughs> um, uh, so it's just um, it's uh, it sort of becomes very difficult to say what the value is because I can essentially decide what the value is um, by choosing what price and uh, what what the strike price and the premium of the call option is, I can uh, decide in advance how much the stock will be worth when I sell it. Um, uh, so it's definitely a little bit complicated, um, in a good way, in in a sense that there's no actual risk because um, the contracts sort of get rid of all of the risk, really. <laughs> um, uh, but for example, let's say that Shopify goes up above $88. Um, then the maximum the maximum amount that I can make is $88. So so that's sort of the limiting factor is that is that uh, if I was just holding the stock shares, uh, then I could sell for more than 88. Uh, but be because I'm holding the call option, 88 is the highest possible price. And if it goes above 88, I can't make any more than that. Um, that's sort of the one drawback, but I think that anybody who invests in anything, um, probably wants to buy some form of insurance, which is exactly what call options are. It's just uh, an insurance contract so that I guarantee that I can sell at a uh, specific price regardless of the price, what the price actually is. Um, <laughs> which sounds kind of like, okay, so then, so then I don't actually care about what the stock price is because I've already determined what I'm, uh, what a fixed price that I will sell it for. So, for example, for NXC, it's already predetermined. I bought it at eight dollars, and I already predetermined that I will sell it for six dollars plus two dollars and eighty. So, so basically, I'm buying at eight dollars and selling at eight dollars and eighty cents. That is, that is everything. It's it's predetermined. So if uh, if NXC goes above eight dollars and eighty cents. Um, I can't, I can't make that extra profit because I already decided at eight dollars and eighty cents. Um, the good thing about it is like the downside is that you know if it goes down two dollars and eighty cents per share, so if it goes down from eight dollars to uh, five dollars and twenty cents, then I still haven't lost any money. So. So it's a it's a per, it's a protective thing to sell call options. It's just I'm protected against losing money. Um, basically, in its entirety, I'm I'm almost guaranteed not to lose money because uh, uh, because let's say that it really does go down uh, from eight dollars to five dollars and twenty cents, then the call option will go down from two dollars and eighty cents to maybe. Like ten cents or something. So then, I can buy back for ten cents, and then sell um, another one for two dollars and eighty cents. So then I'm back in the same position. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, that's all there is to it. So um, there's really not much that I have to calculate because. 
um, essentially it's just uh, about not being too greedy so basically the premium of the call option is already how much I expect to make so it's just okay so it's just I buy this uh, four dollar I buy the four dollars and fifty cents per share and I expect to make seventy cents per share so that's I've already agreed upon how much profit I want to make and then it, and then the limit, and then the risk is uh, basically eliminated. So if it drops, um, if it drops, so let's say if uh, if the stock price drops eighty cents, uh, then the call option will drop maybe eighty cents. So. So then I can buy it back for you know like ten cents and then sell another one for eighty cents, and then I make everything back. Um, yeah, that is uh, basically the everything. Um, if so, if uh, there's more complicated things, I will put it in the description. Uh, so yeah. Um, so anyone who just wants to invest uh, stress-free, then this is the way to do it. So as you can see, uh, I've been doing very well, and. Uh,